How's it going guys? As promised, I am going to be giving you a updated e-evoker guide, Hogchamp. So obviously evokers are really good healers right now. I kind of feel like most of the information I have in my last guide is still fairly relevant, but there's been some changes since actually playing the class at max level and going against um, very high level opponents that kind of, you know, make you figure some stuff out and change what you have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I'm going to go over my add-ons very quickly because I do it in every guide and it feels like it's going to be a little bit repetitive. Uh, details to track healing and damage. Flyplate buffs is uh, the nameplates that you guys see on my enemies that show buff and debuffs. Omni bar is what shows my uh, enemy cooldown tracking. Omni CD shows my friendly cooldown tracking. S Arena updated is my S Arena that allows me to kind of move it and maneuver it, show DRs, make cast size bigger, etc. Trophy GCD shows my globals up here. This is actually beneficial for you guys, but some people like to have it. Um, and weak R's have a ton of different options. I'll show you some of the weak R's I use. Um, if you guys ever stop by the stream and ask me for the weak R's, I'll be happy to share them with you. Honestly, I need to make links available so uh, so you guys are able to get them easier that way. And then Party Pet Fix shows um, Party Pet Frames, kind of like the classic pet frame. But right now it's it's bugged without an add-on. So if you're playing with like a class of pets that you know you need to heal, you definitely need to uh, download Party Pet Fix. So just just for example, with weak R's, uh, I have a weak R here to show if your um, if your time dilation is a uh, high stack, so you recognize that they're taking a lot of damage. I have a weak R here that shows um, nullifying shroud, um, duration and charges left, just so you don't get caught in a weird spot. Uh, time and need cooldown and scarlet adaptation. Uh, let's move it along to stat priority in the end enchant. So I still uh, stand firm on where I was at last time with stat priority. I feel like haste is the best stat. I'll go into why. So basically, I feel like the main reason why critical strike is good on evoker is because it increases the duration of your reversion. Um, two problems with that in PvP. Number one, I feel like you constantly have to overwrite your own reversion just for... Um, the fact that you want to kind of reapply your own hot in terms of keeping your hot up and then also you have a talent called golden hour which makes the target take healing based on the damage they uh, took in the last five second window which means sometimes using an echo reversion just to heal through damage even if they already have the hot is actually a very efficient way to do it so it feels like you're losing value with that critical strike rating because you're not getting the chance to you know have it refresh completely and then on top of that people can purge your uh, reversion, which means you're going to be getting even less value. Um, I tried all three stats on beta, uh, and I just don't feel like the other two were that great. With mastery, I do think mastery is very valuable. Um, I think it's good for healing, um, but basically without haste, it feels like the class is really clunky. So basically what haste does is it allows your essences to recharge um, much faster, which is really important because you want to echo basically before every single heal that you do. So if they're recharging slower, it feels like you have a lot of downtime in your healing rotation or you have to start healing really inefficiently, and that does not feel good at all. On top of that, your two main abilities, Reversion and Verdant Embrace, are reduced by haste. So right now you can't actually see it, but this is a 7.7 .7 second cooldown Reversion. And this is a 15 second cooldown on Verdant Embrace. And if I were to take off all of my gear, so it's 7.7 .7 and 15. So let's just say we decided to play no haste. Uh, this 7.7 .7 goes up to 9. So that reversion is 1.3 seconds off. And I know that doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but it actually ends up being quite a big deal. And this goes to 18 seconds. So that's 1.3 off reversion and 3 seconds off Verdant Embrace. On top of the fact that your essence is probably rechar recharge much slower. Look how look how slow this was to when I had haste. This is really slow. You're basically so we'll just go ahead and do this hasted again. It basically feels like you're gonna, I don't know, maybe that was like a half second or a uh, full second off. I'm not sure, but you're basically gonna be having a lot of issues getting uh, your echoes out, and your healing is gonna feel not very good. We're going to go over enchants. Enchants are very basic. The best healer enchant, in my opinion, is the one that procs intellect. I tried the burning devotion or whatever on beta. It did not feel very good. Since we think haste is our best stat, we're obviously enchanting haste. We're gemming haste. I'd probably switch these to full haste once I get like my bis neck or whatever. There's like one specific crafted gem you could use on the auction house. We'll talk about when we get there for the crafted thing. Um, cloak is speed. Chest is reserve of intellect. It just gives you mana and intellect and the reason why the intellect is good is it gives you more mana but also on top of that 
Emerald Communion gives you mana back based on your max mana, so having more mana actually gets you more mana from your Emerald Communion. Same thing on the pants. Increased max mana has Intellect. Speed on, uh, speed on Bracers and Speed on Cloak. And then if you don't actually know how to gem your necklace, there is something on the Auction House called some sort of settings. Has much to offer. And basically the, the twos are the cheapest for us right now. So if you wanted to get three gems on your necklace, you could buy a two, a two, and then a three. Put these two twos in first and put the three in last, and that'll give you um, three sockets. If you put the three in first, you'll have to buy two more threes in order to get all three. So this is kind of just like a little hack. If the ones are cheapest for you, uh, you could do a one into a two into a three. Um, but you just have to do them in order from worst to greatest so you don't kind of end up having to spend more money. Uh, there is specific water you can buy on the auction house that gives more mana than the water that you get from the vendor. It's called Delicious Dragon Spittle. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more mana over the duration of drinking it, so definitely worth picking up. And for crafted gear, you're going to want to get the Inferious Boots. They just so happen to be your best stats, the Haste Versatility. Um, and then unfortunately, the there's always there's two pieces of uh, Inferious gear for every armor type. But unfortunately, the other piece of Inferious gear, this helmet, is not only bad stats, but it also has a really bad effect. When a player is slain, you gain versatility. Well, when a player is slain in Arena, you already won. Uh, so unless you wanted this for like RPGs or something, I would not recommend using it for Arena. I think the better piece that you want to craft is your second piece, because you could have two crafted pieces, is going to be the neck. The necklace is going to give you um, a proc for one of your better secondary stats. So you're going to be proccing like 407 haste. Uh, I would wait until you have the things to help you upgrade it. Like I'm not, I don't plan on crafting this until I get 10 of the better version of this. So there's primal focus and then there's something even greater than that. You get it from being either doing probably like mythic raids or being 2400 plus in arena. I would craft the tier 2 version if I got 10 of these, which is like, I don't know, maybe 2100 arena. But since I have the ability to get the higher rated ones, I'm not going to craft it at 382. Um, you would just wait until you have the primal infusion. I'm, I'm waiting for the concentrated primal infusion personally. You can customize the stats. Obviously, you're going to want to do verse haste. And then you go ahead and craft this. You put the, the nice gems in there. Um, and then what I was saying earlier is there is a specific gem that you can get that gives you primary stat which is obviously better than off stats. So I'd be looking for a primary stat with haste, and then I would put that in this necklace. Um, you, can, you can't really see the mats because my camera's here, but basically it just costs, uh, just costs Primal Chaos. You can track the recipe, buy everything from the auction house. You just need the chaos. Moving along here, we're going to compare evokers to other healers. And I apologize, I'm kind of speeding through this a little bit just because I've done this guide before. I just wanted to update it, so I'm kind of trying to get to the stuff where it's new. Um, basically, Evokers right now are considered the strongest healer. The reason why, their healing is just the best. Their ability to top people um, in really critical situations is incredible without basically having to cast or casting very quickly. You could do basically really short Spirit Blooms and Dream Breaths, just the one ticks, and it's almost like an instant cast. It's actually pretty difficult to interrupt. Uh, on top of that, you just kind of have your Echo Reversions, which are good, and your Echo... Um, Verdant Embrace, and you just do a lot of healing with those two, so you can top people in a really short period of time. Um, so in terms of healing, you're basically stronger than every other healer. I would say your healing is like a little bit more spiky than Resto Druid. I think Resto Druid is the second best healer, so it, it feels like your HP bar might be kind of bouncing around a little bit more than the smooth, you know, triple light bloom, double rejuve, hots rolling. Probably feels a little bit less um, roller coastery on your teammates, but. Uh, evokers are still still really good in that regard. Their weaknesses, I would say, are being crowd control. And they are kind of difficult to crowd control if they know what they're doing. You have a lot of ways to avoid crowd control. We'll talk about that later. But I will say, if you do get crowd controlled, that is definitely one of your weaknesses. On top of the fact that you are constantly putting yourself in a position where you can be CC'd because you kind of need to vert it and brace into the middle of the map. Uh, for example, like that, it's one of your main heals. Um which also can make you a kill target and um, leave you in a position where you're not really, you know, able to escape too easily. So you have you have strong healing and you have a short range, so you kind of need to play in there, which means you have the opportunity to be attacked and you have the opportunity to be crowd controlled. Other than that, evokers are really good. A lot of people are kind of, you know, saying this class need nerfs, needs nerfs, and 
Um, I think it's one of those things where it probably does do a little bit too much healing, but if you turn the knob a little too hard, then you have a, a healer that has a 30-yard range and needs to stand in the middle of the map and doesn't have enough healing to uh, actually top people when they do have a chance to get out of crowd control. So it's a little bit awkward. Um, there's a fine line in basically how much they can nerf it before it becomes completely useless. Also, I will say that their damage is ridiculous compared to other healers. It is absolutely insane. There's some games where I'm doing like half the damage of DPS classes while still doing like crazy, crazy healing. I don't know if any of these games... Uh, looks like I did a quarter of Mez's damage here. Let me see if I can... Uh, anything else. Uh, 1.5 mil in a game. This guy did 4.5. Um, 2 mil there. But you could basically see in a lot of these games that... Uh, I'm able to put out a ton of damage. Three mil versus, uh, sorry, 1.3 mil versus Chun's three mil. It's pretty ridiculous, and you can see the other healers only doing 135k. So it ends up being, uh, well, he did a lot more healing than me. Looks like he was under a lot more pressure. It ends up being a uh, pretty crazy. This guy actually out damaged me for the uh, the healer to deal with. All right, moving on. Spec and honor talents. Basically, this is uh this is my standard build. There's nothing to see here, so you guys aren't missing anything with my camera. This is my standard build. This is what I would say is my solo shuffle build. I don't really play this build too often. I'll show you like one tweak that I make in almost every scenario for threes at the moment. Uh, the reason why I have one point in Essence Attunement here is because flow state is bugged and it gives you 10% regardless whether you have one or two points. Uh, it could be a tooltip error, but even so, I'm, I don't even know if I'd ever be able to test it because 10% is a really small ability, so I'm just going to trust the tooltip. Even so, I think Essence Burst is still okay. Um, the double stack of Essence Burst is still okay, but I do think that uh, you only need one point in this regardless. Um, so yeah, I think this is my Soul Shuffle build for the most part. And for normal threes, I've generally been taking Dream Flight and putting it to, into Energy Loop because it feels like a lot of the times um, games come down to mana and having mana restored from Energy Loop is really crazy. Energy Loop gave me 9k on that game. Energy Loop gave me... Energy Loop gave me 80,000 mana on that game. Goodness gracious. Uh, Energy Loop didn't get any on that game. Uh, 14k on that game. This is a long game. Energy Loop gave me 115,000 mana. So this is one of the things um, I would definitely recommend trying. I, I do a little bit more to make this build good depending on the, uh, the situation. But yeah, Energy Loop is definitely very crucial for mana efficiency. This, this would be like a 2v2 build. I go all the way down to uh, Blast Furnace. I sacrifice some things like Renewing Blaze and Double Wall. You could make some changes here to get those. For example, you could drop Short Knock and you could drop Walloping Blows and get Double Wall. And then, you know, if you're still the target and you want to keep all the damage abilities, you could drop one in Tune to the Dream for Renewing Blaze. Just for, just for a visual here, I could show you something like that. Something like that. If you're the target and you want to play max damage, max damage over here is basically having life force mender. Uh, I dropped stasis here. I dropped uh, time of need because we kind of wanted to get some of this other stuff. And I'll talk to you guys about spark of insight and power of nexus uh, momentarily. But basically, yeah, we also dropped uh, just in time and flow state all. Basically, we're going all in on damage here. This is probably a bit more of a 2v2 build. So this is, uh, this is basically what I'm going to show you right now is like, what I like to call my dampener build. Why I think this build is really crazy right now is because it's all about just doing an absolutely ridiculous amount of damage while restoring a ton of mana with energy loop. And um, the whole build is kind of based around, um, the whole build is about getting essence bursts and using those essence bursts to get mana into energy loop. So if I'm not the target, I would actually drop this here and do that and do this. You, you could put it into unravel, you could put it into pressing, you put it into, it doesn't really matter. And what you're trying to do here is use leaping flames to try and trigger more procs for your essence attunement. So like you're shooting out multiple living flames, which gives you more chances to get essence attunement. And you're just gonna pour those into generating mana. So this is like, this is legit the most insane spec ever. And I kind of run it almost all the time now, if I'm being honest. The only time I'll switch is if I'm fighting against like a rogue mage or something where you want dream flight to avoid CC or you want time of need. Or if you're playing against like a heavy CC team time of need. But if you're fighting against those wizard comps, you if you're playing this right, you will outlast any team. Um, it's not even it's not even close. Uh, if you're if you're playing the build right, you will outlast any team. You will be 
doing the most insane healing. And you'll be doing the most insane damage. So for example here... Let's just go ahead and get a stack of Temporal Compression. It's just literally two Echoes and two Reversions. You obviously do the start of the game. The first CC of the game, you get a Fire Breath, and guess what? That instantly gives you a proc. You send out that proc. You have a proc there. And then your next Living Flame will hit multiple people. And normally that'll proc again, but you can be really greedy here, and you can just send out a bunch more Disintegrates. And then what I like to do right now into the Wizard Cleaves is I like to Stasis a Spirit Bloom. And the reason why I like to Stasis the Spirit Blooms now is because it'll give you an extra piece of Empath, so you can get even more disintegrates out and then when you end up popping that stasis your spirit bloom goes off again and then you get that empath back and then you get even more essences and you're just you're, do, you're just doing so many disintegrates basically and then all throughout this rotation all throughout this rotation you're getting these uh temporal compressions and then whenever you have four and you do a fire breath you immediately fire that uh follow that up with a disintegrate because it will always proc and then you can follow that up with a living flame which will hopefully give you more procs and you disintegrate on top of that so you're doing a ton of damage um, you can heal, you still do a lot of healing even though you're using a lot of your essences into uh, disintegrates, but yeah, this is this is basically how you pump, how you never oom. Um, and with this build, you are going to be healing a little bit less efficiently in terms of like, you're, you're going to be doing spirit blooms with no echoes, you're going to be doing reversions with no echoes, but it feels completely fine. You know what I mean? You're healing a little less inefficiently. But uh, you're just you're doing the most ridiculous damage and ridiculous healing. So this is like the most insane build. Spark of Insight is nuts. Uh, Power Nexus feels very smooth for just like pumping out disintegrates. And I did drop one point in uh, improved Dream Breath here. And the reason why I did that is because um, when I was fighting against those Wizard Cleaves that are just kind of dampening you. A lot of the times, like, I'm trying really hard not to use Dream Breath because I was ooming. So when you when you play this Energy Loop build, you can, you can kind of use it more freely based on the fact that you just have a lot of extra mana to work with. Um, but it was something that I was trying to avoid originally. So you can, you can tweak this spec a little bit. So for example, I was fighting against a team that wanted to kill me, but I also needed mana. And that's when I kind of dropped, like, the, uh, the Oppressing Roar and the Living Flames and kind of went into Double Wall. Um, so yeah, you can make some changes to it, basically. Uh, so yeah, basically, the old spec, the old standard spec that I talked about in the last guide is still the same, but we have this new and improved absolute, you know, never oom, never die, do max damage spec, which is insane. Honor Talents, you keep Dream Projection every game, you keep Nullifying Shroud every game, and, uh, the third one, honestly, is kind of, it doesn't really matter. I've, I've used Chrono Loop. I think Chrono Loop is kind of cheeky, but once people realize they can dispel it, it's not very good. Um, I've used Time Stop to try and avoid CC, but I don't think Time Stop's very good either. I use Swoop Up kind of for fun. You know, I think it's fun to kind of grab people. You can move people out of darknesses, out of barriers. Uh, Unburdened Flight, I feel like, is a little unnecessary, but if you are getting trained by double melee, you can play it. Precog pre is completely useless, and um, I feel like Obsidian Metal isn't really that good because you never cast anyway, so... Uh, I would say Scoring Flame is probably the best one, but you don't really get a ton of value into anything besides, like, Rest of Druid, so the third one is, uh, the third one is not really that great. Uh, we'll go over all the macros right now that I use. I don't know if anything is new from the last one. Uh, this is just Arena 1 Kick, Dispel Self, uh, Stop Casting Before My Interrupt, so if I'm casting something and I press my Interrupt, it, stop, it makes sure as I stop casting to get the Interrupt. Cursor on Deep Breath so you don't have to aim it. Focus Quell, uh, Unravel when I target an enemy, and Dispel when I target a friendly. Uh, Cursor Rescue so you don't have to aim it, it just kind of goes exactly where you want it to go off your mouse. Cursor Dream Flight so you don't need to aim it. Cursor Landslide so you don't need to aim it. Uh, arena one, arena 2 Kick, Arena 3 Kick, Dispel Party 1, Focus Sleep, uh, Focus Unravel, Party 2 Dispel, Arena Sleep 1, 2, 3. This is kind of a nifty macro here, basically, when I started using double charge of wall, I would notice myself using multiple charges. What this does is it changes the action bar to a non-usable button after you press the first charge. So if you sit here and spam it, you can't use that second charge for, I believe, like 10 seconds. So once you stop pressing it, you can't double tap it. For after 10 seconds, it goes back to that second wall. So this is a, this is a pretty cool macro here, I think. Yeah, there you go. Uh, basically makes it so you can't spam it, which is uh, which is really nice. Cancel. Oh, stop casting for stasis. Uh, a cursor swoop up. 
and this is this is a macro for party one rescue and party two rescue rescue it's kind of janky because you can't actually do like at party one at cursor so you actually have to make a weird macro to target them then use your resco and rescue and then target last target it's the only way that macro is going to work um, this is just a macro to renewing blaze and obsidian scales aka wall at the same time and then i do have a macro to cancel our stasis which is bound to my drink, and I'll talk about cancel our stasis in a little bit. So healing rotation, we talked about this in the other guide. This is basically still completely relevant. You want to echo before all your heals. Echo before reversion, echo before dream breath, echo before spirit bloom, echo before verdant embrace. Um, there's not really too much else to talk about in that regard. Um, Sometimes you will have to heal without Echo, and sometimes, basically, Living Flame is your last resort option. You really don't want to heal with this too much. A little bit different when you get the tier gear because it's instant cast, but Living Flame is just kind of a crappy heal. Sometimes it'll be good after you Verna Embrace. So you have a, uh, like a 15 second window here where you could choose to Echo a Living Flame with the Call of Ysera buff, and that's completely fine, and it'll feel a lot better once you have tier gear, but basically, if someone's dying, your Echo Reversioning and Echo uh, Verdant Embracing on cooldown. I personally like to Echo Spirit Bloom pretty frequently. I like to Spirit Bloom, I don't want to say almost on cooldown, but more often than Dream Breath, just because you play in Path, which gives you that extra essence, and that feels, that feels really, really nice, just because that allows you to heal more efficiently. And then you want to use Dream Breath, um, I don't want to say like, just, just understand that it's very expensive, basically. Um, and you can you can oom, and you can lose games from being oom. And if you are ooming, if you are losing games to oom, and, you know, try this build, number one. Make sure you're utilizing uh, getting out as many disintegrates as possible. But then if you're doing that and you feel like you're still ooming, just, you know, ask yourself, man, did I did I have to Dream Breath in that situation? Because sometimes you, you, you send out that one tick Dream Breath and it just kind of puts up a bigger hot. Um, and you end up feeling like maybe, maybe you could have got away without that one. Uh, so you want to try and be very efficient. Empowers are Dream Breath, Spirit Bloom, and Fire Breath. Fire Breath and Dream Breath share the same mechanic in terms of offensive and defense. If you fully charge up a Dream Breath, it does more burst dealing, and the hot duration is shorter. I'll show you right here, for example. And then if you do a one tick fire breath or a one tick dream breath, the burst damage and healing is shorter and the dot is longer. So I would say most of the time I never fully charge the dream breath. I do one or two um, and then I will NS it, which is obviously a three. But um, yeah, and then same with fire breath. Fire breath completely depends on the situation. If I'm not playing scour, scoring flame, excuse me, I'll generally do like one ticks, honestly, because just getting the dot up is completely fine. And honestly, um, the damage is nerfed in PvP on the initial hit, so having a stronger dot on Fire Breath is actually more beneficial than having more burst damage on it. It kind of depends on the situation, but uh, if you're playing Scoring, you really want to try and power it up all the time to get those full purges. Someone in chat says uh, Dream Projection is useless versus UA locks. If there's three, if there's three UAs out on your team, and you feel like you need to use Dream Projection, use Wall, use Time Dilation, and remove all the UAs, and you'll take basically no damage with the Wall and the Time Dilation, and you'll be able to heal through it really easily. Just one thing I want to talk about in Powers is, when we're taking Cleave damage, I didn't really know this originally, but Spirit Bloom costs the same amount of mana per charge that you do. So, when you're taking Cleave damage, try and, try and power this Spirit Bloom up a little bit. If you get kicked, it's not the end of the world. You still have your Bronze Tree, you still have your Fire Tree. But it's more efficient to get a triple spirit bloom than a single spirit bloom because you're literally just tripling your healing for the same amount of mana. So yeah, definitely look to get double or triple spirit blooms. Damage rotation is really simple. You have disintegrate, you have fire breath, you have living flame, and then you also have like your little crappy azure strike, which is not really that insane, but I like to use it to slow people sometimes to kill totems. Uh, you want a fire breath basically on cooldown, especially if you're playing the purge. So fire breath is really crucial. Living flame... Uh, I don't really care to cast too often. You want to try and cast it when you can, if you if you can, with Scarlet Adaptation up, because it gets stacked pretty frequently. And Disintegrate is basically if you're trying to, you know, squeeze in a little bit extra damage for a kill to push people over the edge, or if you have those nice Spark of Insight procs, if you're playing Energy Loop, those are really good. Disintegrate does a lot of damage. But it will change a little bit with the tier gear. So let's just talk about the tier gear real quick. For Evokers, you will be playing two-piece and four-piece. Your four-piece gives you... 
Uh, reversion healing has a chance to cause your next fl living flame cast to be instant. Deal 20% increased damage uh, or healing, and it stacks up to two times. This is obviously really insane. So when you get these instant living flame procs, you're going to be using them for damage very frequently just because your team is almost always topped, and the healing on living flame is absolutely useless outside of a verdant embrace buffed echoed living flame. So it's really rare that the healing is going to be that good and the damage is always going to be really effective. So you just want to be make, sh make sure you're sending those out for damage because there was actually a change that allows you to get 50% of the mana back you use from damaging an ability or damaging an enemy with Living Flame. So the damage is actually very, very effective. Uh, so the, your tier gear is really good. Uh, you definitely want to be using four piece. Which piece do you not want? You want the helmet, you want the, you want the shoulders, and it looks like both the gloves and the legs are bad. But I would say that the legs are probably a little bit worse since the stats are... There's more of the bad stat, I guess, on the legs. So you'd be losing out more haste, so you'd probably use these four. If you have to if you have to choose gloves... Uh, sorry, if you get legs over gloves, it's probably not the end of the world. But these three pieces are good because at least uh, they have verse or haste. Looks like we're going to lose a lot of haste here. And these, kind, these ones are kind of stinky, but there's not too much you can do about that. Cooldown rotation. I believe I talked about... Uh, this in the last guide and I, I think I still stand pretty firm with it uh, Basically at the start of every single game You're gonna be just kind of getting your dream projection off as soon as uh, combat kind of engages uh, You're gonna be getting your nullifying shroud off as soon as combat engages just so you avoid CC the cooldowns I normally use in order and it almost always works out this way is I generally start the game with the time dilation It's a super short cooldown when you start spending essences as you can see here it, it goes down every time you spend essences uh, normally when there's like the first splash of damage, I like to use my stasis. The perfect stasis rotation in a absolute bloodbath of damage. Mainly I'm, I'm thinking like melee claves here and not like those dampener wizard cleaves. You're always going to echo before your stasis and you're always going to echo before you pop your stasis, okay? You echo yourself, then you stasis, then you verdant, then you echo. And then depending on if the damage is really bursty or not, you one tick a Dream Breath or you NS Dream Breath. And that is going to give you an unbelievable unbelievable amount of healing, just in general. And then when you need to pop that, you Echo again and then you pop your Stasis and it's the same thing. It's, it's just so much healing. I've been changing my rotation a little bit first Wizard Cleaves and I've been cutting out that, uh, that Dream Breath. And I've just been kind of adding in a Spirit Bloom. And the reason why I add in the Spirit Bloom is we talked about earlier is you're just going to get more essences out of that uh, by... What the heck is this dumb buck? Uh, you're going to get more essences out of that by getting the extra impath. So the, those extra essences are going to lead to more disintegrations, which will allow you to have more mana. As well as also uh, allow you to do more damage. Um, so just for example here, if we were... It, it's kind of hard to properly show the stasis because it really depends on how many essences you have. But basically there's times where in the like wizard cleave matchups or whatever where you're just trying to be efficient i'll do stasis without echo um because i'm basically using it just for a little bit extra healing on top of uh mana regen so let's just say like you know i did this here or whatever i'm light on uh i'm light on essences here i'll literally just stasis into a verdant into a spirit bloom and you know depending on what i want to do here you know you could throw out an echo you could throw out a reversion it doesn't it doesn't really matter um, and then when you need that healing, you just pop it and you get your extra path and all that good stuff. So basically I feel like the high value stasis in the wizard matchups is almost normally used for extra essence. I would say like later in the game, you can still do like, if, if you really need the healing, you can still do like the original version of stasis or you can use the original versus uh, st original version of stasis, but swap the dream breath for the, um, spirit bloom. So instead of like the Echo, Verdant, Echo, Dream, you could do Echo, Verdant, Echo, Spirit Bloom. I've talked about this before in the last video, but honestly, I feel like I get literally no value with this because I feel like I'm always out of Essence. But if you ever do have the opportunity, because it happens every once in a while, you can double Echo Spirit Bloom because of the fact that it has a travel time. So if you Spirit Bloom, or sorry, if you Echo and then you Spirit Bloom and you're spamming Echo during the cast, uh, you get an extra hit of it and the reason why the reason why is because um, Echoes on this person the spirit bloom shoots it realizes echoed so it shoots again and you squeeze in that echo on the second shoot I guess if that makes sense. I'll show it again in a second and then oh, yeah in terms of uh, cooldown 
cooldown emergency, I normally like to use Emerald Communion as kind of like a last resort as well as uh, Rewind. It kind of depends on the situation and what you need to use. Uh, Rewind is pretty good to responding to burst damage um, that comes in really quickly. It's an AoE cooldown and Emerald Communion can do the same thing. Except Emerald Communion can be used in almost every CC. Some CCs it can't be used in from what I'm aware of is Blind and Polymorph. Uh, that includes Paladin Blind, Rogue Blind, uh, DK Blind, and it can't be used in Polymorph, but it can be used in like gouges and stuns and fears and traps and incapacitates, and it can't be kicked. So it's obviously a really uh, good button to use while you're in CC as a last resort. Um, let's show the Spirit Bloom thing one more time. So we're going to cast the Spirit Bloom, and then while it's casting, we throw out the Echo, and you can see both Echoes are gone, and it triple heals. So it's a little bit of a cheeky move you could do there with Spirit Bloom. So like I said about cooldowns, you like to get the stasis out, or the dream projection out early, you like to get the uh, nullifying shroud out early, you like to get your stasis out early, I did my rotation wrong there, but whatever. Uh, as long as you pre-echo before you pop it, that's all good. And then, oh yeah, time dilation basically on the first splash of damage, and then you could rewind as you see fit, and you could also Emerald Communion as you see fit, and uh, yeah, it's, you're good to go. Um, I really wish I didn't use that Emerald Communion there. I wanted to talk about how you can kind of get more healing out of it. But basically, if you if you Verdant Embrace and you have Life Bind, Life Bind increases the healing of Emerald Communion by an absolute ton, uh, because you have that you have that uh, share with forty percent. You know, share ally with forty percent. There's been times like late in the games where I literally just use Emerald Communion for an insane heal. You can literally echo this guy and echo this guy. Use one Verdant Embrace, have two Life Binds out, and this Emerald Communion is going to be AoE Lay on Hands. Just, oh! It's just the most healing ever. So Life Bind uh, is really insane with uh, with Emerald Communion. If you're trying to use Emerald Communion for healing, you should always try and sneak in a Verdant Embrace right before that. Um, you don't even have to double Echo, now that I think about it. You can literally just Echo this guy, Verdant Embrace this guy, and it'll give you Life Bind here, Life Bind here. You have Life Bind on yourself. You guys are all bound up, good to go. Bada bing, bada boom, top the whole team. Life bind, life bind, life bind. 40% of that Emerald Communion healing, which is ridiculous, shares to everyone, and it's absolutely nuts. Mana efficiency, we already kind of talked about. If you are not playing Energy Loop, it doesn't even have to be my OP build. You could be playing basically the standard build. But if you're not playing Energy Loop, I will say you are very, very likely to run out of mana. Definitely recommend using it and making sure you try and squeeze out some mana with it um, when you can because it's it's very noticeable. Um, yeah, not really too much else to talk about there. Uh, keep in mind that Emerald Communion does give mana back. So basically, how much mana does it give back? 2% mana every 0.9. So it gives like 8 to 10% mana back or something like that. Just try not to use it at full mana. It, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hefty. Uh, if you don't have to. And then also remember if you're kind of ooming at the end of a game and you kind of need the mana, you can get mana back that way. But yeah, as you can see, mana restored. Find a game where I did both. Okay, well this is a game right here. Energy Loop gave me 86k. Emerald Communion gave me 33k. That was a 5 minute game. Let's check this 6 minute game. Energy Loop 115k. Emerald Communion 16k. I would imagine without that 115,000 mana of Energy Loop, I'd be absolutely tapped. Positioning and avoiding CC is a uh, this is a tricky one and I'm going to be honest I feel like a lot of games I notice myself either having to tank CC or um, not being able to really avoid CC based on the fact that my positioning is kind of always exposed because I'm in the middle of the map um, some abilities you have to avoid CC is obviously nullifying shroud um, as well as deep breath you have a interrupt called quell you have a knockback you have a knock up and uh, when all else fails, if you are playing dream breath, you have a dream breath and I'm going to teach you guys one of the craziest tricks that I figured out so far. You could also pre dream projection CC if a mage is casting polymorph on you or you see a priest running into fear you, you cast dream projection, the CC hits you, it cancels your dream projection that immediately dispels you from CC. But this is uh, this is one of the most insane tips and this is something that when people watch my stream, they're like, yo, how are you doing that? Basically, you store a dispel in stasis. So you do you, you do a little stasis here. You stasis, you vertically embrace your partner, you drop a dream breath, and guess what? You press dispel. Dispel is your last heal on that stasis. Let's say you get CC'd. Bah, bah. You press your cancel aura, does your heal, does your heal, then it dispels your crowd control. 
So there's a lot of times where I'm fighting against hunters. I put up my null shroud. They go through my null shroud. I press stasis. I dispel myself. I do my heals. They get trapped. I literally just dispel my own trap and then we're good to go. Uh, versus mages, uh, you can do the same thing. You know, null shroud. They go through your null shroud. You stasis. You cast a spell on yourself. You do your heals. You dispel your own CC. Um, with cancel our macro, of course. That's obviously really OP. And then, yeah, just make sure you're using everything else you can to avoid CC. And then I, I would basically say... Um, if you need to start worrying about positioning, that's when you worry about position. Like, if you don't have cooldowns left, that's when you got to start worrying about positioning. Um, but I feel like it's kind of inevitable that you will get CC'd on uh, Evoker. It's just kind of the way the class works. Um, I would just say that, un like, let your team understand when you're not able to tank that CC. Kind of, kind of recognize that you will get CC'd, and be very um vocal about when that cc is really important not to hit to try and make sure you can avoid that until you have a stasis to spell until you have a shroud you know until you have interrupts um yeah utility and cc so i feel like evoker doesn't really have that much utility nor does it have a lot of cc i basically feel like you can never spec terror the skies which is your only stun and i feel like sleepwalk is kind of meh um but you do have sleepwalk honestly i like uh i literally sleepwalk kill targets because it just, it just messes them up for a second or two, you know, it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't take off dots, it's not like incapacitate, so you can kind of use sleepwalk pretty loosely, it's only a 15 second cooldown, but I, I wouldn't really say there's like a super effective way to use it, um, you could try and like sleepwalk a DPS if they get dispelled, you know, put them in a full root, nice middle finger to the healer, uh, that's always nice, but yeah, there's not really too much you could do there. In terms of utility, uh, I would say your biggest utility is through your damage. Um, also with Scoring Flame. Scoring Flame is insane. You can get, like, really big purges out. Uh, specifically screws over Druid teams. And then, obviously, doing damage is really crazy. Um, I will say that I've, I've started, uh, using Deep Breath for damage a lot more than I used to. It wasn't something that I originally thought was, like, that great. But I definitely been trying to use it in, like, my rotation more for damage. It's funny, because I'm looking at all these games. I'm basically not using it ever. But that might only be because uh, I'm playing with a Death Knight who ends up, you know, kind of putting people on top of each other. So I don't really really think it's that crazy of a single target, but it definitely feels like it could be used something for AoE. Dealing with kicks. <laughs> I don't even know how this made the guide, boys. All right, dealing with kicks. What do we do? Oh, no, we got kicked. Oh, no, we got kicked. Oh, no, we got... Yeah, you don't deal with kicks on Evoker. Uh, you get kicked, you cast your other tree. It, it's it's really simple. So, in a little edit of a guide last time, basically, in order to get locked out on your bronze tree, if you get kicked on Disintegrate, you get locked out on your bronze tree. If you get kicked on Nullifying Shroud, you get locked out on your bronze tree. If that happens, you cast green. If you get kicked on green, you can cast red. If you get kicked on red, you're already unlocked out of your bronze tree. So, um, I guess... Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. You have bronze, you have green, and then you have fire, red, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this could be nature, I'm not really sure, but just understand which spells lock out both. If you're getting kicked on Nullifying Shroud, immediately realize you gotta cast green. You get kicked on green right after you get kicked on Nullifying Shroud. Well, you might have to cast a little bit of a Living Flame. Might feel a little bit awkward. It's probably not even worth casting. You probably, uh, you probably don't even care to do it. Uh, one thing I will say is you do have Renewing Blaze on your Red Tree as well, and then your, uh, wall is your Obsidian Tree, which you basically can always press, so... Kicks are basically always irrelevant to you. There's really not too much to say. I, I will say uh, the only time it could be a little bit awkward that I personally found with kicks is if I get kicked on Disintegrate or if I get kicked on Nullifying Shroud at a point where I feel like I might need to pop a Stasis, that's a little bit awkward. Um, but I would say that's probably the only thing. Um, how to kite well, survive, and utilize mobility. So honestly, I feel pretty tanky when I play Evoker. Um, I, I actually feel tanky enough to the point where I, I don't even play Dream Breath anymore for mobility most of the time, and I don't actually play Recall on my Deep Breath. I feel I feel like it's a little unnecessary, and on top of that, I actually don't even really play on Bird and Flight, so I guess I just feel really tanky in general. I will say Time Spiral is very nice. Um, I don't really play this, like, as a default unless I'm playing with classes that really get benefit out of it, which was kind of like warlock when warlocks are getting trained they get a second portal as opposed to like you know i play with a death knight they get an extra death advance it's completely irrelevant but giving yourself an extra um giving yourself an extra hover is really nice when you're being trained but yeah i would say for the most part just try not to overlap your hovers because 
having the additional movement speed on the first few seconds as well as like the run cast or whatever it's uh it's pretty nice doesn't really feel like it's necessary to overlap them while while you're kiting i guess you could throw out your like sleepwalks to uh kind of get more distance if you get kicked you can use a root whatever um you're just a really mobile class so just try not to go through all your mobility too quickly and you should be fine and understand i guess when people connect that's when you got to use cds uh for example the wall and the, the renewing blaze and whatnot but it's pretty it's pretty easy to survive on uh evoker uh, if you feel like you're still dying through all of this, you could try dropping Energy Loop for Dream Flight, and you could try and drop, I don't know, maybe one point in, like, Walloping Blows or something. Take Recall. That way you can at least get, like, a little bit extra mobility if you, if you still feel like you're, uh, if you still feel like you're struggling in that regard. I'll show, I'll show you how Recall works. Recall's really OP. Like, if people are just straight running you down, maybe in Solo Shuffle or something. Also, I will say energy loop is not necessary in solo shuffle. I, I've never experienced games where I'm losing just based purely off Oom. And I kind of like Dream Flight to avoid CC as well as survive in solo shuffle. Um, so after you cast a, a breath ability, you have a few seconds to port back in time. And that's really nice in solo shuffle. You'll you'll break you'll break some ankles really hard with that in solo shuffle if people are trying to attack you. Because you could do it back to back with your two different uh your two different breaths. And then in terms of uh, offensive and defensive, I feel like you're kind of almost always on the offensive as Evoker. I think it's one of the strengths that you have. Um, and you just you just have your really high healing to kind of back you up when you're kind of like playing uh, playing out there. There's times on Evoker, like I said, where you're kind of, you know, you're in the fight when you have no CDs or you're susceptible to CC. That's when you kind of got to be like, yo, guys, we got to pull back for a little bit. I'm struggling. Purges are growing out. CC's available, whatever. Just uh, take the time to recognize that you are in trouble, um, be vocal with your teammates, and that's when you want to play defensive. And then in terms of compositions, I think Evoker is a really good healer in any type of comp, except a comp where you feel like the healer needs to CC a lot. So for example, Maid Shadow Priest, I would say probably not an Evoker comp. I don't actually think Evoker is great at healing wizards in general but i do think that you could be completely fine in healing wizards that are based purely off of damage so for example like demo ellie like you don't you don't need to run in there and i'm gonna cc this you're gonna cc that you're gonna do that doesn't really matter but you know for example like mage shadow priest okay this guy's got to cc the healer this guy's got to cc the kill target that guy's got to cc the off target you just don't really work like that um your your strengths is based off purely dealing damage so if you're healing those damage wizard cleaves you're going to feel good, but if you're trying to heal like a setup comp, uh, for example, like even like sub rogue mage, you're not you're not going to be very good with sub rogue mage because you're not going to be able to cross CC very well. Assassin arcane rogue mage, you could be completely fine because, you know, one little in cap or sleepwalk on the healer with your assassin rogue and your arcane mage pumping will feel completely fine. But yeah, we kind of sped through this one. I would say like the main things that are added to this guy from the last guy, TLDR, is... Uh, the stasis dispel, the the new build that feels really freaking OP. I love this build. You just do so much damage, um, and you just get infinite mana. It's really fun. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. I hope you guys enjoyed, man, and uh hope you guys are having fun on the Evoker. I know I am. A little bit of a flex here. A little 25 hundo on the Evoker. The only person that's higher rated than me is the person I'm queuing with. Love to see it. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.